when we think of Star Wars, we tend to think of good versus evil in its purest form. The good always wins, while the bad get their just desserts. But it's a story that's very much child-friendly. Sure, there can be made a case that some aspects of Star Wars have been a bit dark and adult, but true horror has never really been a theme in any of the on-screen Star Wars projects. I'd say The Empire Strikes Back is probably the closest we've gotten to anything dark on screen, aside from Anakin Skywalker's turn to the dark side. But did you know there are so many written stories that are dark and adult themed in Legends? To a casual fan, the only thing that matters is what's on screen, and I don't fault anyone for that. There is so much in the way of novels and comics that it's hard to keep up with it all. But the darkest Star Wars stories come from what is now deemed Legends, where Sith Lords were more brutal than anything we have seen in the likes of Darth Vader or Darth Sidious, where zombie stormtroopers existed, and where one man could devour an entire planet of its force energy. And that's what we're going to focus on today, Darth Nihilus, the Lord of Hunger. So sit back and turn out the lights. I may not be scary, but the story of Darth Nihilus is one that will truly terrify any Star Wars fan. Hello everyone, I'm Gerald. And before I get started with this Star Wars horror story, I just want to thank a couple people for the idea to make this video. I made a post last week asking you all for your opinions on which topics you'd like to see a video about. The responses were incredible. Thank you to everyone who responded. Buried deep within the comments was one from When God Matt, where he says, hook us up with some of that sweet, sweet Legends material. And then another comment from Rebel Based Dad says, more villains, Darth Bane, Sidious, Sith Legends, Dirge, Grievous, Aura Singh, Asajj, etc. Let's get dark and adult. So after reading those comments, I realized I haven't really talked about that stuff in a long time. Not because I don't like it, but because I just haven't got around to it much in my limited time. So I decided to combine the two suggestions. And following the short synopsis of Darth Nihilus, I will be telling a dark story about the Star Wars Legends character highlighted in this video. So make sure you stick around for it. Since the Knights of the Old Republic 2 became a thing, Darth Nihilus became my favorite Sith Lord. He was so much different than any of the others we had seen, but it's also been about that long since I've dived into the character of Darth Nihilus. Well, it's a long time. Memory fades, especially with everything that's been released since then that has been at the forefront. But not only is Darth Nihilus different, he's something straight out of a horror novel. Wearing black robes and a mask in the shape of a skull without the lower jaw, Nihilus became known as the Lord of Hunger. To give you a little backstory and insight into his character, I'm going to read a short synopsis from the Wikipedia page. I'll leave a link to it in the description if you want to know more about Darth Nihilus, the Lord of Hunger. There are a lot of things in the synopsis that I won't go into much detail about in order to not go too long on this video. If you'd like to hear more about those things, let me know in the comments. Let's begin. The human male who would one day be known as Darth Nihilus, Dark Lord of the Sith, was alive at the conclusion of the Mandalorian Wars, a galaxy-wide conflict between the Mandalorian Neo-Crusaders and the Galactic Republic. Amidst those battles, he lost everything, his family, friends, as well as his will to live. He was on the planet of Malachor V during the final battle of the war in 3960 BBY. When Jedi General Mitra Sirik gave the order to activate the Republic's mass shadow generator superweapon, the generator killed almost everyone on the planet's surface and in orbit nearby. The future Dark Lord survived the superweapon's destruction of the surface and assumed a dark persona while grieving his losses, in part as a means of survival. He was trapped on the planet by the artificially created mass shadows, along with the bulk of the opposing disabled fleets that filled space around the planet, where the Mandalorians had committed all of their forces in a last attempt at defeating the Republic, and took ill suddenly due to the Shadow's effects. His emotional pain that manifested as an emptiness that swept over his idle body, and it soon began to manifest as an intense 
hunger. Without intent, he drained the life force of another survivor. The act was an unpleasant experience for him, but the hunger and his painful memories faded for a brief moment alongside his sickness. Nonetheless, the emptiness returned more relentless and severe than before. He indulged in absorbing the energy of other survivors. But the more he fed, the shorter the hunger was appeased and the more powerful it became. While almost every Sith Lord has been a narcissistic demon in their own rights, other than such Sith as Darth Vectivus, Nihilus was the Sith that other Sith feared. There's virtually nothing about Darth Nihilus' past, but even if he were a good man prior to his involvement with the dark side of the Force, all of that was erased from him. Darth Vader tried to make the case that he had killed Anakin Skywalker, and we all knew that wasn't completely true. But with Nihilus, there was no good in him screaming to get out. His hunger to feed his insatiable thirst for the Force led Darth Nihilus down a path that would see him consume the living Force from not only his victims, but an entire planet, to the point that nothing could survive on that planet. Now, close your eyes and picture this. Imagine being a Force user, whether Jedi or Sith. Your confidence is high. You've heard stories of Darth Nihilus, but those stories are just fairy tales, exaggerated tales born of fear. There's no room for fear inside you, only determination to eliminate a single man who had become a threat to the entire galaxy. It took a long year to catch up with this elusive Sith Lord, Darth Nihilus, but in the darkness, there he stands, mere meters in front of you. He has a calm about him, a calmness that becomes uneasy in moments. The galaxy is full of those who mask their identities and think more of themselves than their actions can account for. Luck. Their victories have been more attributed to circumstances outside anyone's control. But there's something different about this Sith Lord. He barely even takes notice that you're even there. His eyes behind the half-skull mask are in a blank stare. He's looking at you but at the same time he isn't. He's looking through you, past you, not just your physical presence, but you can feel that he's looking at the blank space you once stood before you took your first slow steps toward him. You stop dead in your tracks. You know this man is dangerous. How dangerous is yet to be determined. Overconfidence is a weakness, yet there you are, ready to take on and defeat the Sith rumored to be the most powerful Sith to ever live up to this point stories. You keep telling yourself they were just stories. No one can do the things he's rumored to have done. But his calm becomes your tension. A dread comes over you. You try to block it, but the fear is too great. Is he causing this or is your emotion outwilling the force? With no time to hesitate, in an instant you lunge for the Sith Lord while igniting your lightsaber in midair. Your action is quick, faster than you've ever moved, barely seen by the naked eye. A mere meter and a half from your adversary, something unseen hits you, and you fall backwards to another dead stop. Dread, fear, pain, all flash through your mind and body just as Darth Nihilus' fingertips ignite into an electric flame. The flashing energy strikes your body and penetrates your skin. You're helpless to move. Other than the agonizing sounds, you struggle to force out from your constricted lungs. But he stops. The electricity slowly dissipates, but you're still struggling to move. Still seeming uninterested in you, Darth Nihilus casually walks over toward you. And without stopping his slow stride, it happens. You feel your energy slowly seeping through your pores. Your skin begins to dry. Your eyes become unfocused. Your mouth slacks open. Then it's over. Your lifeless body lay as Nihilus continues his stride over you, then past you to the blank spot you once stood with the courage of an army of a thousand men. Darth Nihilus didn't even seep a drop of sweat. This is what to expect from Darth Nihilus. No monologue, no grand story about how feeble you are in your attempts. You've barely been worth the effort of what he did to you. You were lucky it was over as quickly as it was. Your force energy was barely enough to quench his hunger for even that moment. He didn't toy with you as Palpatine would in the centuries to come. He reacted and you were gone. Darth Nihilus is what nightmares are made of. And if he is a nightmare, then Malachor V is where nightmares are born. 
If the name of this planet rings a bell, it was featured in the two-part Twilight of the Apprentice arc in Star Wars Rebels. If you haven't seen Star Wars Rebels, it's one of the scariest scenes depicted in Star Wars on screen. Jedi and Sith frozen in time as stone and ash from a battle that took place thousands of years prior, and only a few people survived that battle. Darth Nihilus was one of them, changed forever and even becoming a wound in the Force. That means his existence caused all of the Force pain, not just Jedi, Sith, or whatever unlucky being came into contact with him. Darth Nihilus was a true terror in the Star Wars mythos. I feel like an entire Star Wars series with multiple seasons could be made of Nihilus and the battle on Malachor V, an adult series with real terror and suspense, not some Freddy Krueger remake, a story that would make Tim Burton uneasy. The site of this Sith Temple on Malachor V was also used by Palpatine, aka Darth Sidious, to fuel Darth Maul's hate and a need for revenge against the Jedi. I could do an entire bit on that and how ironic Sidious' manipulation of Maul was, so let me know if that interests you, or if you'd like to see more of the Siths of the Old Republic era. Hell, or even both. But if the aftermath helped make Darth Maul the way he was, imagine what it would do to one of the very few survivors of the actual battle. And before I go, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. It really does help me to create more of this content. And I do appreciate every one of you for all you do. Until the next video, I'm Gerald, and I'm a Star Wars fanatic. Wishing you all great health, happiness, and peace. Thank you all for watching, and remember, this is the way. And positivity in the Star Wars community should be the only way.